Sometimes when you're building a pond, you don't have power nearby. This happens to me a lot, and it's one of the reasons that I love low volt pumps, because it's easy to extend the low volt power cord yourself. So in this video, I'll show you how easy it is. If I can do it, anyone can. G'day, my name is Kev. The aim of my channel is to help people build and maintain ponds without spending a fortune. If that sounds like something that interests you, you might like to subscribe and check out my website, ozponds.com. A low volt pond pump plugs into a regular electricity socket. It has a transformer. The transformer takes the regular household voltage. In Australia, that's around 240 volts and it converts it into a low voltage. This particular transformer is converting the voltage from 240 volts to 12 volts. Lots of household items and outdoor lighting use transformers to transform the voltage that comes out of the wall socket. You'll find that a lot of these items are DIY friendly, particularly outdoor garden lighting. You'll find you can buy lights, extendable cable and the transformers at most large hardware stores. The annoying thing is that all the extendable cables that you can buy usually have different joiners. I guess this is to make sure that you use all the same brand, or maybe it's just to make sure that everything is matched up and compatible. Either way, it can get frustrating when the plugs don't align, and it's the same with low volt pond pumps. There's been a few times where I've purchased the wrong cable. So now I tend to just extend the cord myself. So let's take a look at how I do it and a few different options and what I think are the most important things to consider. Keep in mind, I'm not an electrician, just a pond hobbyist. So always check what's allowed in your part of the world. So for today, I'm extending the cable on this little Resin King 12 volt pond pump. This is the funny little socket on the transformer that the low volt pump plugs into. Here's the plug attached to the pump that goes into the transformer. So I cut the cable close to the funny plug. I want to leave a few inches of cable below the plug. I then use this cable stripper or whatever it's called to remove the outer insulation, exposing the positive and negative cable. I then remove the outer insulation on those as well. These cable strippers are cheap on eBay or Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description. I then take the cable that I'm using to extend the cord and expose the wires using the cable strippers. You'll notice that the cable I'm using to extend is thicker than the original cable. This is to mitigate some voltage loss. Because the electricity will be traveling a greater distance from the transformer to the pump than was originally intended. There's a whole science to this, how thick a cable needs to be, how much the voltage will drop over a certain distance and how much heat is generated. Rather than go into this, there's online calculators you can use. I'll try and link one in the description for you. Anyway, once the wire is exposed, it's just a matter of joining the positive together and the negative together. I've used lots of different methods in the past, but my favorite is soldering them together. It's easier with two people. Solders are cheap. And so again, I'll put a link in the description. You can also buy things like these funky little joiners. Again, I'll put a link in the description. You can heat these up and they shrink to join the wires. In the past, I've even just twisted the wires together and then covered with electrical tape. So basically all we need to do is allow the electricity to flow. So we make sure you match the positive with the positive and the negative with the negative wires. The cable we're using here had writing on one side, so we called that the positive. Once the wires are joined, we use some electrical tape to cover the exposed wire. We can't have the positive and negatives touch. So then we soldered the negative wires together. 
taped them up and then added a shrinking insulation cover over the top. So now you can see the funny plug that goes into the transformer is connected to our extension cable. Now we just need to connect it to the pump. So we strip off the insulation at the other end of the extension cable. We do the same to the cable that's connected to the pump. Again, I leave this section of the cord as long as possible because I never want to put the join in the water. You can buy waterproof tape, but I feel safer if the join is well clear of the water. So now that the wires are exposed, we just repeat the same process as before, solder the wires, tape, and use the shrinking insulation. Variable speed pumps like the Jibao DCP series that I like to use have three wires. The extra wire sends a signal from the controller to the pump. The process is the same. Use a larger diameter cable, match up the corresponding wires. It's worth noting that anytime you cut the cable, you're most likely going to avoid any warranty. It's also worth noting that you can't extend the cable an infinite distance. The most I've personally extended the cables on any of my ponds is 25 metres. Anyway, that's how I extend the cables on my low volt pond pumps. Hopefully it helps someone out. Thanks for watching. See ya.